Welcome to Midweek Advent at St. John's. In the midst of the COVID-19 stay at home, I am on the back porch again this week for our midweek service. The sun is out, so you may see some lighting changes zoom in and out, and you probably may even hear a dog or two, uh, as we have a dog or two, and that sometimes happens uh, in this time. Today, um, we're gonna do some prayer at the end, um, kind of a daily update. Staff has been working very diligently on planning. We are at this point still planning to do um, Holy Week and Easter, um, knowing that we can't gather probably at that time in crowds of more than 50. So uh, we will probably come up with some creative ways to do that, as I've mentioned before, and we are still working on that. Staff is doing a great job of reaching out and trying to connect with those in our congregation to make sure that no one feels too alone in this time of distancing, that we come together as the body of Christ. As a little bit of normalcy, uh, we're looking at our normal uh, call uh, in Lent for our theme, which is the call of Lent. And our call this week is the call for a Savior. And again, I wrote these things months ago, and I can't think of a more auspicious time uh, for us to need a Savior to realize the gift that we have in our Savior, Jesus Christ. So it is today that we, we look at that a little bit. And, and in do, so doing, we're using an Old Testament book to kind of, I think, prove a point. And it's not one that a lot of folks necessarily know a lot about. Uh, this is not one of the first five books, the Torah or the, the Pentateuch. It is um, a book that follows a little bit. It's, it's a little bit different. It's the book of Judges. So we'll get that into that in just a second. Our reading is from the second chapter today, the 11th verse. It's a relatively short reading. So this is our reading. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. They forsook the Lord, their God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the peoples around them. They aroused the Lord's anger because they forsook him and served Baal and the Ashtoreths. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, despite the fact that it's somewhat interesting to pronounce the names of these folks, uh, these foreign gods, um, it's an interesting story, but a story that is all too familiar in Scripture, where we fall short, we wander away from God, we worship other false gods. Um, and we find these stories, as I mentioned, in the book of Judges, which is the seventh book of the Old Testament, uh, just following uh, Joshua and precedes uh, Ruth. Uh, now, Ruth is a book that many people love dearly. Joshua gets a little forgotten as well, uh, as does Judges. But Judges is an interesting book because it's a little bit of the history of uh, the people of Israel becoming a people. The tribes that had left Egypt had coalesced and entered into the, the promised land through the time in the wilderness. They'd received the Ten Commandments and God's training on how to become a people. And this book kind of fills in this gap that prepares us in the story of Scripture for what comes next, which is the development of the nation of Israel. That's not a thing yet. They are just the people of Israel. They are 12 assorted tribes going about their business as best they can, kind of like affiliated states, I guess you could look at it. Judges are sent to God's people in the midst of things when things are difficult because they have gone off the rails. And judges are not seen like we see judges today. They are not in a court of law, but they are the ones who save, who come in, who, who sweep in and are directed by God to save his people. They are not like Judge Wapner or Judge Judy. They are there to introduce God's justice and grace back into people's lives. There's a unique rhythm in this book that you come about. And I remember when I first studied this uh, in depth, it, it jumped out at me and I found it relatively intriguing. So starting with our verse in chapter 2, and then in chapter 3, we get this, verse 7. The Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. Then in Judges three twelve, again, again the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. Then in Judges 4.1, again Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And then in Judges 6 once, the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. And in Judges 10.6, again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And then in Judges 13.1, and on and on and on, and it goes, this is the story of God's people. Where God gets angry because they chase after false gods, it hurts them, it causes problems in life and in their culture. 
foreign powers come in, take over the land, and the people cry out for release and for justice. And God sends a savior, a deliverer, a judge. We have a bunch of judges in the book of Judges. That's why that's plural. We have Othaniel, Ehud, Deborah, Gideon, Jephthah. We have Samson. That's one that a lot of folks know. Brief interlude for barking dogs. I'm back. Um, so judges. So we have all these judges and lots of famous ones. A lot of us have heard of Samson and his great feats of strength. That's a great children's story, though we don't get too far into his actual lifestyle in that story because, well, quite frankly, most of the judges, most of the judges are very, very human. And we read about that. My favorite story in the book of Judges is actually found in, in Judges 3, and it is the story of the judge um, Ehud. And uh, he has a confrontation with a conquering king from Moab, King Eglon, who's really, really fat. And it's a gross story. So I love telling it to junior high boys. Um, and if you want a gross story to look into, you can look in uh, Judges 3 and, and read the story. And, and read between the little lines, uh, the lines there a little bit of, of what's going on in that story. The interesting thing is uh, about uh, Ehud. This is a great story for anybody that's left-handed. Because uh, Ehud is able to sneak a sword into uh, the king's palace. Because when you came in peace, you tended to wear... Um, the sword on your um, opposite, your right side, because most people were right-handed. And to pull a sword out of its scabbard on your right side was difficult. However, Ehud, being left-handed, had no such trouble. And Eglon, the king of Moabites, ended up paying the price for that. And God delivered his people. So this is a story. These stories of the people of Israel and God's mercy over and over. There's a rhythm and a cycle that falls into place. The tradition tells us that Samuel was the author of Judges, but there's no real evidence either way for that claim. But it's an interesting story. It was written during a time of Israelites' captivity, and ultimately this book is about Israel's history from the time of Joshua to the time of Samuel where the kings would arise. It's a great book, it's an interesting book, but it is a book that once again re reiterates to us the need that we have for a Savior. And during this Lent, in the time of upside-downness and self-quarantines and safer-at-home uh, things, um, and are struggling trying to figure out how to do what we need to do, we really realize that in all these things, God has come to us and provided us in lots of ways with all we need, including Jesus Christ, our Savior so that in him we may live up to the fullness of his glory, that we may grow into our baptismal image every single day. And as we look at this call for a Savior, as we look at this call of Lent, we are called to follow our Savior to the cross, but more importantly, beyond the cross, to the empty tomb and back out into this world that God loves so much. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the blessings of this day, for the sunshine that has finally come out. We ask your blessings on us as we seek to make plans, to follow your will, to hear your call in our life. We ask your special blessing upon those in the medical professions that are dealing with this crisis. Be with doctors and nurses and be with their families who care and worry and fret. Be with all those who help the hospitals run and operate, those who make medical equipment, those of us who don't have anything to do with any of that process, but yet can reinforce them with our love and our prayers and our support as family and friends. Be with the congregation of St. John's and guide us in the days ahead as we seek to make plans for celebrating your resurrection. And we ask also, Lord, that you'll be with those who are sick, who are hospitalized, who are ill, who are lonely, Bring your blessings of grace upon all of them and strengthen us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Hang around real soon here. You'll be having um, hold an evening prayer and we'll do that once again. And next week, join us again in the midweek and we'll have one last message for such a time as this. We'll be taking a look at the story of Esther. So we look forward to seeing you next week here at Midweek with St. John's during Lent and the call of Lent. Amen. Jesus Christ, 
you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who seek creation's story, shine on every land and face. Praise to the God of all. 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it. and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our God. 